Welcome to Scratch Coding. This is a series of videos to help you learn to code using Scratch. With Scratch, you can create your own stories, puzzles, and games, and whatever else you want to create. You're in control of everything in the programs that you write. Create a free account at scratch.mit.edu so you can do coding with us. Today, we're going to create a tic-tac-toe game. Two players can click or touch, and wherever they touch it, it'll mark it X or O. And X won the game. Let's start a new project and write the code for this. First, we'll delete Scratch Cat and get a new background. We're going to have to draw our own in paint. I'm going to fill it with a different color. Then I need some lines for my board. I'm going to make sure my fill color is the right color and then we need to make a sprite with the paint editor. The first costume for this sprite is just going to be a rectangle. And that costume will be called Hidden. I'm going to make another one and put an X on it. And I'll call that one X costume. And another one, I'll call it O costume. Making sure that this is a, the letter O and not a zero. We're going to need nine sprites, nine characters for our board for every one of these spots. And I'm just going to say that this one is in spot one. So I'll call that sprite spot one. Going to the code for spot one, I want to say when the green flag is clicked, switch the costume to be hidden. And when this sprite is clicked, sometimes I'll change it to the O costume, and sometimes it'll change to the X costume. Every time we click the board, we need it to change. Sometimes it'll be X, then it'll be O, then it'll be X. It takes turns. So to keep track of that, we're going to need a variable. Make a variable and call it xTurn. So if xTurn is true, then that means it's x's turn to go. That's going to be a global variable, so all sprites will be able to see it. I want to set my global variable in the code for the backdrop, not in the code for spot one. So I'll go to the backdrop, go to the code for the backdrop. So when the green flag is clicked, I'll set X turn. I could type out true right here, but in coding you can just use one for true. So if it's one, if X turn is one, that means it's X's turn. So every time I start a new game, it's X's turn. Going back to the code for spot one, when the sprite is clicked, if it's X's turn, then I'm going to change the costume to X costume. Otherwise, I'm going to change the costume to O costume. So I got to get if it's X's turn in that if statement.
And then after x has a turn, we need to set x turn to false, which is 0. And then after o has a turn, we need to set x turn back to true. And so they take turns. But they shouldn't be able to take turns on the same spot. Once that one spot is already set, it shouldn't be able to change again. So I need another variable, and I'll call it already set. Every spot on the board is going to either be set or not. And so this will be a local variable for this sprite only. And when the green flag is clicked, I'm going to set already set to false because it's not going to be set yet. And I'm going to do all this code and allow somebody to click and take a spot only if already set is false. And then once it's set, I'll set already set to true. So let's hit the green flag. Already set is false. Nothing is in this spot yet. But once I click it, already set is true, and it won't let me click it again. If I've duplicated this nine times, then we could already play this game. You can play your friends, you can touch the screen, or you can click on it. Of course, we can get rid of these variables. But the game doesn't tell us when somebody won. To check and see if somebody won, you have to see if they are all the way across this row, this row, this row, or down the three rows, or diagonally, either one of the ways. It's a very tedious process. And you can play the game like this, or you can add the code I'm fixing to show you so that the game will tell you when somebody won. If you want to add that code, then the first thing you're going to need is a list. And I'm going to call the list Spots Taken. And all the sprites are going to be able to see this list. I'm going to go back to having just one sprite. So that we can change the code here and copy it to the other sprites. What I want to do is in this spots taken list, I want to say every time a spot is taken, I want to get this list to keep track of whether it's X or O. If X took spot one, I want to add X spot one to the spots taken list. If O took spot one, I want to add O spot one to the spots taken list. Now we can copy the code to all nine spots. When we hit the green flag, we need spots taken to get cleared out. So let's go to the backdrop code. and delete all of spots taken whenever the green flag is clicked. And we also need to go to the code for every one of these and change it to the right spot. So when X spot 2 is clicked on, it needs to add X spot 2 to spots taken. 
Same for O. So now our list keeps track of every spot and whether it's an X or O. Now that we know it works, we can hide our list. And now we have to code the really tedious part. I'm going to go to the code for the backdrop again. And I want to write the code for every row and column and both diagonals. I have to say if this spot and this spot and this spot is X then x1. If this spot and this spot and this spot is O, then O1 for every row and column and diagonal. So we have to check if spot 1, 2, and 3 are all X, and we don't have AND three times. So we have to put a couple of these together. So put a couple of ANDs together and check to see if X spot 1, 2, and 3 are all in your list. And if so, broadcast that X1. But if O is in spot 1, 2, and 3, then we're going to broadcast that O1. Now I have to duplicate for every possibility of X and O. But when the green flag is clicked, none of these will be true, so I need to check for this forever. Put the whole thing in a forever loop. Now I need a sprite that whenever X1 or O1 is broadcast, it'll show who won on the screen.
So this sprite has three costumes, one that it's hidden, one that says X1, and one that says O1. Let's go to the code. When the green flag is clicked, it's going to switch costume to the hidden one. We're going to need switch costume a couple more times because when it receives O1 message, it'll change the costume to O wins. And when he sees the message X1, he'll say X wins. Let's test the code. X1. Let's see if O1 works. It works. Now you can create your own tic-tac-toe game. Click like and subscribe below so you don't miss any lessons and it'll make it easier for other people to find them. This free coding lesson was provided by STEM in Games. Watch more lessons and keep practicing so you can create new worlds and games and make your ideas come to life. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.